The objective of this lesson is to divide decimals by single digit whole numbers using place value understanding and relating to a written model. First we're going to look at how the place value of the digits in the problems compares with the place value of the digits in the quotients. Looking at the three problems we can see that the dividends all contain the digits 1 and 2. In the first problem those digits represent the number 12. In the second problem the same digits represent the number 1 and 2 tenths. And in the third the value of the digits is 12 hundredths. Determining the unit form of our dividends will help us to determine the unit form of our quotients. Let's see how that works. The first problem is 12 ones divided by 2. So we write 12 ones divided by 2, which is 6 ones. The unit form of our dividend is the ones because the smallest unit is in the ones place. Our second problem has 1 and 2 tenths, which put into unit form is going to be 12 tenths divided by 2. And like the first, 12 divided by 2 is 6, but this time our unit, our smallest unit is tenths. So our quotient is 6 tenths. And the third is 12 hundredths divided by 2, so our unit form is hundredths. 12 hundredths divided by 2 is again 6, but this is 6 hundredths. So remember, find the smallest unit of the dividend because when a number can be divided evenly by the divisor, the smallest unit of the quotient will be the same as the smallest unit of the dividend. Now we will use the place value chart to divide 3 and 6 tenths by 3. First we will build our dividend in the top row of the place value chart. We have 3 ones and 6 tenths. As you can see, I've already divided the bottom portion of our place value chart into three sections to represent our divisor. Now we will divide each place value into three equal groups, beginning with the ones place. We have one, two, three. So we do have enough to separate into three equal groups. Now let's go to the tens place. One, two, three and we have one, two, three more. To find our answer, we look to see how many are in each row. In each row, you will see one and two tenths. So our answer is one and two tenths. Now we can use what we learned in the previous slide to help us check our answer. Earlier, we, we learned that when a number can be divided evenly by the divisor, the smallest unit of the quotient will be the same as the smallest unit of the dividend. The smallest unit in our dividend is in the tenths place. Our divisor has is to the tenths place. So that checks out. And when we put our dividend in unit form, it becomes 36 tenths divided by 3. 36 tenths divided by 3 is 12 tenths. Twelve tenths is the same as one and two tenths. In this example I will show you how to unbundle a number when one does not divide evenly in a place value. I will also show you how the place value chart relates to the standard algorithm. Let's begin by building our dividend in the top portion of the place value chart. We have five ones. and two tenths, tenths. So now we're going to divide or separate those into two groups. Beginning with our ones place, we have one, two, three, four. And we have one left over. 
We cannot separate one into two groups, so we need to unbundle it. We're going to take this one unit and separate it into ten tenths. Now, we have twelve in the tenths place. So we have twelve numbers to separate into two groups. Two can go into twelve six times. So we're going to put six in each group. Remember, our answer is how many are in one group. So we look at one group and there are two and six tenths in one group. So our answer is two and six tenths. Now I'm going to erase the answer for just a second so I can show you how all these dots relate to the standard algorithm. If we have five and two tenths divided by two, we're going to look at first the units place. Two can go into five how many times? Well, we saw that right here. How many did we put in each group? Two. So we put the two above the five. And how many did we use in all? One, two, three, four, which goes below the five. And then we subtract these five minus the four that we already used, and that leaves us with one, this one that was left over. When we unbundled that one, we had twelve tenths. Bring down the two. So now we have twelve divided by two. We said we used six in each group. Six would come up to the top, above the two. How many did we use in all? We used twelve. Subtract, and how many are left over? If we used it all twelve of them, zero. You bring up your decimal, and there's your answer. Remember the answer here? Two and six tenths. and our answers match. In this last example we will have to unbundle again and we're also going to see what happens when a number cannot be divided evenly. That's when we're left with a remainder. Our problem is 1 and 5 tenths divided by 2. We have 1 in the units place and 5 in the tenths place. Now we have to divide those into two equal groups. One cannot be divided evenly into two groups, so we have to unbundle. We're going to take this one from the units place and make it into ten tenths. So one becomes one unit becomes ten tenths. Okay, so now we have fifteen tenths and they have to be divided into two equal groups. We know that 15 is an odd number, so it is not going to divide evenly by two. Let's just go and see what we come up with and how many we have left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and we have one left over. So now we're going to take that one and unbundle it. So let's take our one and unbundle. And when we unbundle, we are going to make ten hundredths. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we have ten hundredths that we need to divide into two equal groups. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We know that ten divided by two is five. Now let's find our answer. 
We know from earlier that our answer is always what one group has. And so there are seven tenths and five hundredths. So our answer is 75 hundredths. But let's think for a minute. Our smallest unit in our dividend is in the tenths place, but the smallest unit in our quotient is in the hundredths place. Why is that? The answer is because we had to unbundle from the tenths place to the hundredths place to account for this one that was left over, or our remainder. So, so we've learned now that when a number cannot be divided evenly by its divisor, the smallest unit of the quotient will be smaller than the smallest unit of the dividend. Now let's relate what we did on the place value chart with the written algorithm. We have 1 and 5 tenths divided by 2. 1 could not be divided evenly into two groups. So how many did we put in each group? Zero. Awesome. And we unbundled it and that made us 15 tenths. So now we have 15 tenths. So what we're going to do is how many groups of two were in 15? We used seven in each group. And how many did we use in all? 14. We subtracted those 14 and we were left with one, this one left over, which we then had to unbundle into the hundredths place. So we unbundled and we were left with 10 hundredths. How many groups of two are in 10 hundredths? Five. How many did we use in all? 10. We subtracted those and we have zero left over. Our answer, 75 hundredths and 75 hundredths. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot about dividing decimals using the place value chart and the standard algorithm.